Chapter 9. So on to Gladiator School. Man, you know, La Nuestra Familia had continually tried to recruit me. One thing I have to say about La Nuestra Familia is that out of all the gangs I have ever seen, and I'd seen them all, these were the most vicious. These guys would kill, they would move, and they didn't care in front of a cop under the gun towers. If they had orders to hit, they hit. And they, majority of the time, were all youngsters like me, except for the leaders. The leaders were a little bit older. The few leaders they had at the time. The La Nuestra Familia was just starting to take off as a prison gang. What we had that was different than any other gang was we had a constitution. Before I joined, there were certain guys there that I had respected. Even though they were involved and they were gang members, I had a lot of respect for them, like Crackers and Hobo, Larry, Art, Poncho, Prophet, Yuba, Big Yuba, love you Yuba, Black Bob, Macaron, I could go on and on forever. I came to love all these brothers with all my heart. I would kill and die for them if it had been necessary. These guys were La Nuestra Familia to me. There in Tracy and other places too, our paths had crossed and they inspired me to join them to be one of them. The Vindiolas and the Vinesas and the Castros and the Gabriels and the Salsas and so many more. I knew and respected them all before I had ever become a member. I would kick it with them. They would slip me things, show me the constitution and say, hey, read the constitution. Check it out. This is what we got going on. I was an outsider, so I figured this was a great honor for them to let an outsider read the Constitution. They had their hit list and they had their ways. They set things up, their organization there. The way they organized the penitentiary, each block had its structure of organization and they had their own warehouses of store items for the soldiers. They were really organized, that impressed me about them, but I still wasn't joining any gang. I was doing my own thing. I was dealing drugs there in prison and I was getting drugs in dealing them. I had enough sense to know to treat these guys with respect. I remember the first time I went to the lieutenant in my block. I think his name was Smiley out of Watsonville. I walked up to him and he had a couple of bodyguards. I said, hey, I wanna talk to you Smiley. So cool, Smiley gave me the signal to come up and talk to him. I said, hey, here, I handed him some dope. He said, what's this? I said, well, I'm dealing here. And just out of respect, I'm gonna kick you guys down a little bit of everything I'm dealing. Because I was trying to impress them. I said, because if this was my territory, I'd be expecting that if anyone was dealing in my territory, they should be kicking me down. What I was actually doing was covering my ass. They liked that. They liked the way I got at them. They liked that. So in the course of time that I was there, I was making friends here and making friends there. I was seeing things happen that I didn't agree with, like my friend Jerry who got killed, who shouldn't have been killed, though I had stepped up for him and said, this is my friend. They thought he was an Aryan Brotherhood sympathizer, but he wasn't. He was part of my circle of comrades there in DVI Tracy. When I heard they were gonna hit him, I stepped in and raised my hand for him with the lieutenant on the block. Jerry was on a different block though, but I assured him that the lieutenant could send word over to stop the hit. Anyway, he ended up getting killed because the order to stop the hit didn't go through in time and I watched him die. He died as the guards were rushing him to the hospital. They had a bloody towel around his neck. Just as he passed my unit door, I saw him and I saw the bloody towel fall from around his neck. The blood squirted out in a gush, splattering the window in front of me. I looked into his eyes just then feeling helpless. He died in that moment as if saying goodbye to me with his last glance. So I was pissed off because I hadn't been able to save him. He had gotten a visit that day, his first visit in a few years from his ex-wife. She brought his two little sons to see him for the first time and last time. I remember he had been so happy and talked of getting back with his ex-wife and kids again. There were other incidents too. Some sick shit jumping off there. I watched guys getting butt fucked in the shower. Oh, here we go. Turned out raped and shit like that. All kind of crap, you know. This was prison reality all around me. Not just us, but all different groups and gangs. 
but I couldn't do anything as long as I was on the sideline. I got close to a lot of the soldiers. I liked them. They had asked me to do this major heroin transaction for them because I could get it, so I said, sure, I'll do it. The only one that I was going to deal with was going to be my friend Chato. He's a soldier. Actually, I got the dope and I gave it to Pancho first, and Pancho would give it to Chato, who would pass it over to Johnny and G-Wing. We were over in H-Wing, so I brought the dope back and I gave the dope to Pancho. I was watching as he's allowed to test it. They just passed a rule in La Nuestra Familia, by the way. I think it was a bad rule because the penalty was death. We could have modified it so that anybody who fixed lost rank or some other discipline, but it turned out to be crippling to us. It was that no one was allowed to fix heroin anymore. You know, the old people still did, but if you fixed heroin, you were going to be killed. So soldiers were not to fix. We lost a lot of brothers over this rule, so I gave the dope to Pancho. He green lights it, it's good, best he ever had. So he sent it with Chato to Johnny. Now Johnny and Chato were homeboys, they're friends. Chato, when he took the dope to Johnny, said, hey, look out for me, man, kick me down, right? Johnny told him, yeah, sure, I'll look out for you, homie, don't worry, you know, because they're homeboys. Now it just so happened that I was going to a visit at that time, and I walked out with Chato. I knew Chato had the dope. I watched Chato get it straight from Pancho, and he had handed it to Johnny. I was watching this because I was out for a visit. I was walking out with them, so I went on my visit. Johnny got into the dope, and he fucked it all up. He cut it. He fucked the dope up bad. Then he turned around, and he said that either Chato or I fucked the dope up. Johnny did not know that I was an undercover recruit on probation. He thought I was just an outsider, and he can say the outsider burned them. There's an investigation into the dope. I was jacked up about the dope. Art, the Rock, he was like the second captain there. Larry actually was running the yard. So Rock came to me in the chow hall and he said, Hey, what's up, man? You burned us on this shit? And I was all, what? What the fuck are you talking about? He said, well, the dope turned out to be shit. The first thing I thought was that this was some kind of test. So I told him, hey, are you trying to test me or something? Are you testing me to see if I'm weak or what? You know, because I ain't weak, man, and I don't give a fuck. We can get busy right now. And Rock said, hold it, because Rock was the one really pushing to recruit me. Tell me what happened. So I told him, I gave the dope to Pancho. I brought the dope in, I gave it to Pancho. Pancho tested it, said it was the best he ever had. He gave it to Chato. I walked out with Chato because I was going for a visit and I saw Chato hand it directly to Johnny. So there's an investigation and he said, okay, we're going to do an investigation. Now, whenever there's an investigation in the Nuestra Familia, somebody's going to get killed. So anyway, it turned out that it's under investigation and they checked with Pancho and Pancho said, no, the dope was good. It was the best I ever had. Somewhere from Pancho to Johnny, that dope got fucked up. So right away, Johnny put it on Chato. It had to be Chato. So word came down to hit Chato. We kind of looked out for each other. I was thinking about getting into this game. I mean... Because of the constitution, I saw the potential there. I was thinking, man, with this kind of discipline, this kind of structure, you know, they wanted to go to the streets with this. I was getting ready to go to the streets. It may be a good thing to hook up with. Chato was told, hey, they're going to hit you, brother. The word has come down for us to move the pieces. Now, when the word comes down to move all the pieces, that means that one of the brothers is going to get hit. Because they don't want him to know where the pieces are. So good looking out, Pancho. I love you, boy. Anyway, so he's the one that gave the heads up to Chato. And Chato told me, and I remember that. I'll never forget that, man. We're all standing there like, what are you fucking going to do, Chato? And I was telling him, Chato, go fucking kill Johnny, man. A couple of other guys were like, yeah, go hit Johnny. I said, that's what you got to do. Johnny set you up. That fucking Johnny, man. My homie, man, sighed Chato. Well, what do you do? I said, Chato, you got to go do something. They're going to kill you. Chato, I'll never forget the look on his face, man. He told me, how do you go to the police and tell them, lock me up. My brothers are going to kill me. I'll never forget that, man, you know. And I told Chato, no matter what, I'll make it right. I'll make it right. 
But maybe you better lock it up. So Chato went and he locked it up. Johnny's walking the yard like he got over and I was fucking mad. I was not letting this die and they're telling me, let it go. We got it under control. Well, what I did not know was Johnny was getting ready to go home in a couple of months himself. They were going to wait until he got home. They knew what happened. They figured it out that it was Johnny, but they were going to wait until he went home. They were going to kill him on the streets. It would be easier to kill him out there. And because Larry, our main captain over Tracy, had been told by the administration to cool it on the killings for a while, or they would lock up the leaders. I mean, we can kill him just as easy in the penitentiary, but nobody would have got busted on the streets. That's what they told me later anyway, so I believed them. But at the time, I was not letting it go. I was telling them, no, uh-uh. I didn't know their plan then. They hadn't told me yet, so I was pushing it. They're telling me, hey, you're starting to rock the boat, man. You're saying shit and we can't allow that. And that's when I told them, look, you guys want me in? This is the terms for me to get in. Give me and Johnny a knife and let us go at each other on the yard. Let whoever wins be the one who's telling the truth. Here I was again, believing in some Hollywood movie version of how warriors settle a matter to get to the truth. Well, you don't dictate to us. Yes, I do. You're asking me to give up my life. You're asking me to devote myself to this. Well, this is what I want, blood in, blood out. I don't have a problem killing somebody that's got it coming. The one that's got it coming is this guy because you know, he was a lieutenant. And if we're going to be in an organization, a criminal organization, loyal to your brotherhood and carnalismo, then we cannot have brothers or lieutenants or leaders who will sell out another brother for anything. One of the things in the constitution, one of the articles says, I quote, no brother shall put anything above another brother. No punks, no drugs, no nothing. And this is what, in my opinion, Johnny has done. So by the constitution, he deserves to die. And since you guys don't want to seem to do it, I will do it. Give me the knife, give him a knife, that's my terms. Anyway, so my terms were accepted. So here I was, they had accepted the terms to my becoming a member. In exchange, I must now go out and kill Johnny in a duel of what I thought was honor. Now that it was really going to happen, that night in my cell, I had to search my soul. Was this worth it? I could just as easily lose this duel against Johnny. I dismissed that thought. There was no one equal to me in the fair knife fight, I thought. Then I could spend the rest of my life in prison for killing this piece of shit. And for what? For my friend Chato, who didn't even have the heart to kill Johnny himself. He instead chose to go into protective custody. At the time, he was my friend, and I thought it was unjust what was happening to him. Years later, I would find out he was just a piece of shit madly in love with a homosexual drag queen. But at that moment, he was my friend. I watched him cry tears because of the choice he was being forced to make in order to survive and to live. What the fuck was I doing? I had been running my mouth again, demanding justice for a man who was going to turn out to be worthless. I had talked the talk. Now it was time to walk the walk or tell them I decided not to join after all. Let them clean up their own little mess. Back then when you were placed on probation period before joining, the probation period was meant to give them time to observe you and decide if they wanted to let you in to the Nuestra Familia. At the same time, at the end of the probationary period, you could still say no thanks. You had decided that this wasn't the life for you after all. The cost of admission was too high. It was blood in, which meant you had to make a kill or at least a very respectable attempt. You either stabbed the shit out of the target and by the grace of God, the victim lived, in which case you still get in with the understanding that you still owe a kill. All this weighed on my mind and heart all that night after I was told it had been green lighted. Most of all, I would be risking my soon to be freedom and release from prison. That is why Rock didn't want to green light my request because they wanted me on the streets where my experience and skills could better be utilized for the advancement of our goals to take over the streets of California. Now because I made it in the condition of me becoming a member and because they believed me that Johnny had cut the dope and set up Chato for the fall, 
they were giving me the green light to have this duel of honor as the price of my membership into La Nuestra Familia. At least, this is what I naively believed. In the Bible, it says that pride goes before the fall. When it came down to it, it was now a matter of pride. Like I said, I had talked like a gunfighter. Now it was time, it was sundown, the hour of the gunfighter. I remembered all those classic westerns. I grew up idolizing the gunfighters who always said, get out of town before sundown or you will die. There is a song by Elton John called, Don't Let the Sun Go Down On Me. It said, cause losing everything would be like the sun going down on me. Going to prison, I had lost everything. My Air Force career, my new life, and even my childhood sweetheart, Patty, who had warned me that if I ended up in prison, she wouldn't be able to deal with it. Being true to her word, she couldn't handle it. She ran around getting wasted and fucking my friends and had parted ways with me. So I took the name Sundown because it meant to me nothing left to lose. It also meant to me that I was a gunfighter now for the rest of my life. In the morning, I told The Rock, okay, I'm in, let's do this. Give Johnny a knife and give me a knife. Tell his bodyguards and all the carnales to stay out of it and I'll show you that I'm the real motherfucker. It was set for that day in the afternoon in the yard. I would be giving my piece on the yard and Johnny would be giving his too. A diversion would be set up. A couple of brothers would start fighting each other way over on the other side of the yard. Except they wouldn't really be fighting, just wrestling and making it look like they were fighting to draw all the gun towers attention. All the guards would respond over there. They would not stop until given the signal. Johnny and I would go at each other on the handball court. His bodyguards would not stop me. The rock himself was on the yard. Everyone was. Whenever a hit of a brother went down, it was mandatory that all the soldiers watched to see our discipline in action. Rock called me over into the inmate mini canteen where inmates sold sodas and ice creams and other treats to the inmates on the yard for store-bought ducats. Inmate money used to purchase items on the yard and to pay for photographs we were allowed to take of ourselves on the yard. Of course, we had our people running that mini canteen. Anyway, he called me inside the store away from the guard's view and he handed me a knife, one of the knives I had actually made for the game. I recognized it, it was a good one. The Rock told me, you gotta be good, you gotta be quick. Johnny was supposed to be dangerous with the knife. He told me, good luck. As soon as you see all the guards running over to the fake fight, you guys go for it. Johnny's already been given the same instructions. I took the knife and put it under my shirt and the waist of my pants. That was it, it was showtime. As I eased my way over toward the handball court, I could see Johnny with his two bodyguards. Johnny was leaning against the handball wall, watching the handball players. I thought he sure was confident. He's not even paying any attention to me as I was standing about 50 feet away from him at the end of the handball court. His bodyguards sure were noticing me. For a moment, I thought by the serious looks on their faces that maybe this was a setup and they were actually gonna hit me because I kept running my mouth about the injustice to Chato. But then I said to myself, no, they wouldn't have given me a piece if they were planning on hitting me. That wouldn't make any sense. Just then, Rock walked past me and said, get ready, it's time. Sure enough, a fight started on the farthest side of the yard. The gun towers were yelling for them to stop and the yard guards were all headed there. I moved quickly to where Johnny was standing near the handball wall. As I was moving toward him, I saw his bodyguard step away. I had never killed a man with a knife before. I had killed a man with a gun on the streets before he could pull his own gun to kill me. I had beaten a monster half to death with a mop ringer before he got a chance to try to butt fuck me in the county jail. <laughs> Causing him permanent brain damage for the rest of his life. Before I came here to prison, I had beaten down two Mexican mafias when they came to kill me in Chino. <laughs> Some hero put a child molester out of his misery. I had punctured the lungs and ribs of two guys claiming they were Aryan Brotherhood members over a weight bench and a homosexual named Sylvia in Vacaville before I came here to Tracy. I had trained myself all my life for this moment, but I had never killed a man in a knife fight. Now that the moment was here, I remember Johnny at first. 
When I was about five feet in front of him, he glanced at me as if I were that annoyance who had tried to cause trouble for him over Chato and the dope deal that had gone all wrong. He simply dismissed me as insignificant as he kept his attention on the two brothers way over in the corner of the yard fighting. I remember thinking, doesn't this idiot know we don't have much time and we have to get to this now? So I pulled my knife out, showing it to him and said, are you ready? At the sight of the knife in my hand and asking him if he was ready, he jumped back a couple feet like he was completely surprised at me being there with the knife in my hand and asking him if he was ready. Fear filled his eyes for a second until he remembered he had bodyguards to protect him from just a thing as this, 